Hi everybody, Mr. A here. Uh, I'm at home. Uh, I'm gonna be creating this video on my laptop and I want you to do your best and follow along. Remember to pause if you get lost or if I'm going too fast and you can always rewind and go back or scrub back and forth, whatever you guys call it. And make sure you pause and follow along. These soda cans are gonna be great. Can't wait to see you. Let's start our can project. Now, by this point, you should have downloaded your can template. And as you can see up here, we have a tab and that tab says can template and yours probably has your name on it. You may also notice that at the bottom, I have a different dock than you do. That's because I'm doing this video on my laptop at home and it's gonna look a little different. It's still on the, it's still an Apple product. So it's gonna look basically the same but a little bit different, so don't panic if the bottom looks different than yours. So we're gonna have our template here open. Keep in mind that these two uh, light blue teal colored guides here, uh, those are not gonna print and you won't even see those later. And everything in this middle area is what's gonna show up on our can. So anything to the far left or to the far right is not gonna show up at all. Let's take a quick tour around Photoshop and I can show you some of the basics and what you're gonna need to know with Photoshop here. So on the left here, this is called the toolbar. Uh, there's tools you can add and there's tools you can subtract. Uh, the top one here is the move tool. We'll use that later to move things around. We have our selection tool. There's all kinds of different things. I'm not gonna spend forever on it. You may use the type tool, that's the letter T, but to start with, I just wanna show you a couple basics. The first one is, if you hold down the command button, so if you look at the keyboard and you hold the command button with your thumb, and then you take your index finger or your middle finger and hit the minus button, it'll let you zoom out, okay? And then if you hold down command with your thumb and you hit the plus button at the same time, it'll let you zoom back in. And another one too, if you're zoomed way out or you want it to fit the screen, you can hit command with your thumb and then zero with your pointer finger and it'll fit right into the screen. It zooms in close. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. I'm gonna hit command minus one, one time just to zoom out a little. So that's uh, your zoom controls are, are zoom in and zoom out. If you zoom way in and you hold the space bar, you'll notice that the cursor or the mouse turns into a hand and then you can click and drag and, and move around the document too if you want. So command zero, and then I'm gonna zoom out just one like that. Over here on the left hand side, we have our two colors that we have selected now. We have this like neon pink fuchsia color and black is our background color. Those we'll see later on. Uh, what I'd like you to do right now if you could, is if you could go up here to the window menu and pull down until you see swatches. It's like the word watch with an S, you click on that, and then your colors are gonna pop up over here. And I'm gonna click on this tab and pull it out. So now you can see I have swatches, I have color, and you're noticing that I can kind of move them around within Photoshop. And where I like to put them is right up in here. And when it highlights blue, it's gonna pop it right into this little organizer. So I'm gonna bring color up here too. So now we have swatches, we have color. If you wanna use this, you can use this to select your colors or you can click on swatches and find them real quick right here. You can pick either one that you want. I like to do swatches, but it's entirely up to you which one you wanna pick. And then down here below, right now it's in the 3D. You probably don't have 3D up. The 3D is gonna pop up later once we uh, make our can 3D. But for now, I want you to click on the tab that says layers. So right now we have our background layer. We have nothing over it. We're gonna add our logo and everything else. Our background is gonna be our gradient. Some of you have the gradient. I've seen me demo the gradient before. Maybe some of you've done it already, but the gradient ends up going on the background. So we have background, we have our swatches here. Uh, some of our things are gonna be uh, across the top. Make sure this box is checked right here that says show transform controls. If you don't see it, you have to click here on our move tool at the top. So click move and click show transform. And that's gonna make it so we can make things bigger or smaller later. So do that right now, make sure that that is selected as well. So you'll notice a minute ago, I went over to color and I picked this teal and it changed it over here. So on the left, it's always gonna show us what our current foreground color is. So if I go to my paintbrush right now and start painting, that's gonna be my color. If I double click 
and change it and I make it a different color like this uh, fuchsia color and then I draw over top like this. Every time you double click and change that color, it's going to make it look different. It's going to make your, uh, your picture a totally different color. So that's how you can change your colors right here. And obviously this, this is the paintbrush. So I want to get rid of this. And I, I made a mistake, obviously. I want to get rid of everything that I had. And one thing I want to show you is our history tool. So if you go up to window and we pull down until we find the word history, what this is, is it's a record of the last 20 or, show, 20 or so moves that we made. So if I click on brush tool and I start going back in time, you're gonna see that that's, those are the different moves that I made. And I can go back and start right here at new guide and it gets rid of all that stuff. And we don't have to worry about my scribbles anymore. You can go back in time. The other way you can fix things is um, we can go here and then we can go up and do edit, undo. And undo um, will go right back to your last stage. And my last stage that I had was everything on the screen. So if I go to edit, undo, it'll go back here, edit, undo, it'll go back, edit, undo. It'll go back in time until you get where you want. And history does exactly the same thing. The other thing that it does, if you want to get use that same control, is you can hold Command and Z, and that will go back as well there. So we got rid of all that. That's just a little quick tour around um, just the basics of Photoshop that we're going to need. What we're going to look for is we're going to do our background and we're going to do our gradient. Uh, if you've already done the gradient, you can skip this step. If not, you follow along with me. If we look at our toolbar on the left-hand side, you're going to notice that there isn't a spot for our gradient. We can't find it, it's not here, but it is. If you hit these three dots at the bottom, those three dots mean there's more. So I, if I click and hold down my mouse, it's gonna show me all these other options. And you'll notice at the bottom, it's gradient tool. And I'm gonna click on my gradient tool. Some of you, when you click on the three dots, it may go into um, a mode where it edit, where you see edit toolbar like this you may see this mode as well. And if you do, what you can do is scroll through it until you find that gradient tool. And when you do find the gradient tool, you can find it and drag it in. Now we should already have it because I added it a minute ago. Yep, gradient tool is already in there, but you can add and subtract things. So this custom shape tool I can take and I can add it in. But anyway, we have it here now, so I'm not worried. So I'm gonna click on my gradient tool and right now my gradient is really dark it's like black and a dark gray i don't really want that for my can if i want i can click the arrow next to it and it's going to give me this drop down menu which may look a little different on your computer but what i'm going to do is click right on the actual gradient and it's going to give me this thing where it lets me change the gradient and it's going to let me alter it so i'm going to pick one like i said this may look a little different you may see a, a different group of colors. So I'm just gonna click one for now. The important part is here, this bottom part. So right now I have yellow into black. Now I, we did a little warm up in class where we, I told you to pick some colors of your product and you could pick up to four. So right now I have two, I have black and I have yellow. So what I'm gonna do is just click right below here. I'm gonna click and it added another color and it made it yellow. So if I click here on, I can click right on this chip or I can click here as well. But if I double click right on this chip, it's gonna bring this up. And what I'm gonna do is go in the upper left hand corner for white and I'm gonna add a white color. So now I have yellow, white, gray, and black. So if I pull this black over, whoops, it's on the one on the bottom. So I'm gonna pull this over. It can actually change what my gradient's gonna look like. It would be darker and darker, but I like keeping that gray in there. I can also bring the white over and you can really alter your gradient to be exactly how you want it. So I think this is gonna be good. Yellow, white, gray, and black. It's gonna look pretty good. Uh, that's a little better. So then you click okay when it's done and you'll notice up here we have our little preview. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag with my mouse. It doesn't automatically happen. You have to click and you drag with your mouse. And I'm gonna try left to right first. Now that's good, but you're noticing uh, it's not over top in between our guides here. So if I created my can right now, my can would really only show up silver. So if I go from top to bottom, 
there. Now I would see my colors. Um, but I like the heavier color at the bottom. The uh, darker color that has more weight is going to look better at the bottom. So this one I like, but I want to show you a couple other examples. At the top here, if you pick the first one in, this is the circular uh, gradient, uh, also called the radial gradient. If you click in the middle and you go to a corner, it's going to give you something that looks kind of like a target. I don't love that one as much. If I click the next one, uh, this one here is the angle gradient. If I click in the middle, go to the corner, it kind of creates that angle look. It's cool. It's kind of 3D. Uh, next one is going to be uh, the reflected gradient. So it's going to probably start and end with yellow if it does it right. Because we have yellow and then into black and then back to gray, white, and yellow again. Let's try it. It should end with yellow. Nope, it's not working right. Usually what it does is starts and ends with that yellow. Um, so it's basically the same as our first one. And this last one is the diamond. If I go middle to corner, it's going to give me this nice diamond pattern. If I, you know, go really short with it, it's going to give me just a nice little short diamond. Kind of cool, it looks 3D. But I'm going to go back to my first one. This one's the best for me. And nope, I got it upside down. I got to go from bottom to top. There we go. I'm going to stick with that one. That's going to be my gradient I'm going to choose. And over here on the far right, that's our background. So we're going to build over this. So our background is our gradient, and then we build from here. So some of you hopefully have downloaded your logos. So the logo is actually going to be placed right over top of this. So we need to take and get our logo in here. So in order to get your logo in here, there's an easy way to do it. Most people just go file open and open their, their logo, but there's a, a way we can place it over top. And we don't have to go to file open. It's like gluing it right over our document. So what I want you to do is go to file and we're going to place it. So we're going to place embedded. We're going to embed it and place it. It's like gluing it into our image. So we're going to place embedded. We're going to click that. It's going to take a minute and then this will pop up. And then I have my scan. This is my joke one. The mine isn't done yet. So we're going to click on that. We're going to click place and there it is. It pops it right in. Now, if we go to our move tool right on the top here, click on the move tool, make sure we have show transform. And what I'm going to do is grab it from the corner and I'm going to shrink it down a little bit just so it fits inside these guides here. We want it inside those guides. Once you're done, you're going to see a big X and that means, hey, you're not done yet. Let me know when you're done. So you can double click inside or hit return or enter and that says yes I'm good I'm all set now you may notice that it has this white around it and we want to get rid of that white that white does not look good so in order to get rid of it we're gonna use this tool on the toolbar that's called the magic wand so when we click on the magic wand it, you're either gonna see that or you're gonna see the quick selection tool which kind of looks like a paintbrush we want the click and hold on it and find the one that says magic wand Move your magic wand over and click on the white in the background. So once I clicked on it, I'm going to zoom in and show you what it does. This, you'll notice these things around the outside. These are called marching ants, and it means that that area is selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the delete key and get rid of all that white. We don't need the white anymore. So right now it's a smart object. It's not directly editable because when we pasted it in, it made it a different kind of object called a smart object so if this if it deletes you're all good you can go to the next step you can ignore this but if that comes up if you get this where it says cannot complete your request you just need to do this move your mouse up top and you're gonna go to layer you're gonna go to rasterize so halfway down we go to layer rasterize smart object and you'll notice the icon changes over here now it'll let us delete it so now if I hit delete, good, now it's gone. And that looks pretty good. I got the white color inside. It says mine isn't done yet. Now the next step is very important. We go to select, deselect, or you can hit command and D at the same time. There, now it's not selected anymore. I'm gonna zoom out, command minus. There, there's my label. I kind of like the black. Uh, it looks kind of nice, but if your image is really dark, so if I take my move tool and you'll notice if this is over black, it's really hard to read when you have black on black. So you can change the color of the lettering. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, Command plus. Let's zoom in, pull down a little. 
And what I want to look for next is my paint bucket. Now this looks kind of like my paint bucket, but this is not it. This is the 3D material drop tool. We're not using that. We're going to go down to the bottom here. And what I'm going to look for is my regular paint bucket tool. Where is it? Here it is down at the bottom paint bucket. I'm going to click on that one. And right now I have yellow selected. So if I go to fill and click it, it's going to turn yellow. Edit, undo. I want to get rid of that color. I want something bright. I want something that's going to stand out. What matches yellow? Blue matches everything. So I'm going to get this nice sky blue over here. Notice my color changed when I clicked on it. And I'm going to click inside and I'm going to make all those letters sky blue. Now let's match it. What I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit more, Command Plus. If I click and I miss, like if I accidentally click the background, it's going to make everything blue. So what you really need to do is zoom in and make sure when you look at that mouse, there's a little pointer in the top. See how it's wiggling around there? You want that pointer to be right on your object, right on your letter, and click right on it. If you miss and accidentally click the background, it's going to make the background blue. So I hit Command Z, that was undo. Now I want to click all of my letters, M, I, N, ooh, N and E were connected, so it did all of it. And then we need the isn't and the apostrophe up here, I made it a little high. And we can leave that black, that looks okay black. So we have our little uh, joke saying mine isn't done yet. And it's a little plain at the bottom, we can always add something or we can add text. Over here, I want to show you something, and then we'll get to adding some more goodies. On the right-hand side, you're going to notice we have layers. So right now, if I go over here, you're going to see we have background, and we have this layer that says scan. If you want to, this isn't required, but you can double-click on the word scan, and it turns blue. And I'm going to type in the word logo, L-O-G-O, -O, hit return or enter, and now I have my logo layer and my background layer. Now watch this. There's a little eyeball on the side. If I click this eyeball, it makes it non-visible. This eyeball means you can see it. So if I turn it back on, now we can see it. If I turn my background off, now we can't see anything. Background's hidden. Now I can also turn my logo on and my background off. So you can turn them on or off at any point because they're separate. So I can take my move tool and I can move this around anywhere I want and the background doesn't move because it's separate. So two separate layers. And we can add more layers too if we want. So I'm going to move my mouse down on the toolbar and click on this letter T. And if I click one time right below it, what I can do is this, uh, this false text comes up that says Lauren Ipsum. It's a long story, but it's a placeholder text that had to do with the olden days when they did printing presses. So there's you can look up the origin of it. It's not super exciting, but just know that's where it came from. So I'm going to write the word diet. Whoop! I'm going to do D-I-E-T, like if it's Diet Coke. And I'm going to take my move tool and I'm going to click inside of it and I'm going to drag it up and we can say diet. Mine isn't done yet. Now I don't like that font. Notice I, uh, I moved the size. If you click the corner, you can make it bigger or smaller. This little corner box. Now that font is a little too tall. It doesn't match too well. So I want to change the font. So if I do this, if I go to my text tool again, my letter T, and I highlight it, just like in Google Docs, so now I have that highlighted, and you look up top, and now it's the font universe. You probably don't have that one, but let's pick a different font that would maybe match a little bit better. Um, these ones are all a little bit crazy. Um, this one's pretty bold and pretty big for, for diet. Let's take this and maybe grab our move tool and shrink it down a little bit and then move it and then when you're done you can hit return and there we go we have diet mine isn't done yet that's kind of funny so one more thing i want to show you if you want to add text you can add more text and if you look over here you have the eyeball you can click the eyeball to turn it on or off and then we can add shapes if you want to so that'll be our last thing we're going to do uh, if you move your mouse down, you'll see that we have a uh, rectangle tool, rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygon. So if I go to rectangle tool and I click on that one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag over it and release. And we have this nice light blue color here, but it's covering our word diet. 
So I want to change the color. If I go up here to the word fill and change, let's make it black. Okay, well, it still didn't solve my problem because I can't see diet anymore. But if I go over here to the right and I click on the word diet, and look, the layer is below rectangle one. If I take diet and I click and hold, I can move it. Look, I'm gonna move it above. See that blue line? That means you're moving it above. So drag it up, wait for the blue and release. And there it is, now it's above. So we have diet on the top, then we have rectangle, and then we have our background. I mean, besides our logo, that's that's how the stack goes. We have diet, rectangle, and background. So it's they're all stacked up. It's like a game of Jenga. So that's kind of how it works. We can turn our logo back on. So we have diet, mine isn't done yet. And then let's add a shape. So right now we added the rectangle, but let's add something fancier. If you move your mouse to the three dots here and hold, we're looking for the one that says custom shape. All the way at the bottom, custom shape. It looks like a wiggly star or Slimer from the Ghostbusters, I call it sometimes. So I click custom shape, and then I'm gonna move my mouse to the top and then all the way over here to where it says shape. And then you'll see there's a little icon and right now it gives you a preview of nothing. And we're gonna hit the arrow next to it and then boom, it opens up. If you don't have all these different shapes, you may need to go to this gear over here on the side. Go to the gear and you're probably gonna to wanna to hit the word all. You wanna load all of the shapes. You don't see it but you because I have them all loaded in but you'll see the word all click on it and then it's going to say append you just click ok and there's all of your shapes so mine isn't done yet let's think uh, what could we, we could do like a little explosion here let's do that shape that would be great um, cancel that was an accident what I'm gonna do is click and drag and it's gonna give me this big shape like this and I'm gonna move it over like that uh, diet mine isn't done yet. Ooh, this might look good behind it. Yeah, that would be good, but it's the same color. Let's change the color. So um, in order to change the color, we're gonna move over here to where it says Starburst 1, and I'm gonna click right on this little icon, and if I double click on it, this is gonna pop up. So let's make it yellow. Click OK, but it's covering my logo, and if you remember from before, we just have to drag it behind. Now click on Starburst, drag it down, and we want it behind our logo all the way. There it is. And now we have that cool yellow kind of explosion behind it there. And then what I'm gonna do is go over here to the T tool, and I'm gonna add another text layer. And I'm gonna click once, and I'm gonna put extra fruit flavor extra flute fruit flavor not flute flavor now we're gonna put that below right here and uh, that's kind of hard to read in the word extra there maybe I should change it so if I want to change it I'm gonna go to my letter T and I'm gonna highlight this word and then I go up top and change it from blue to maybe that yellow color again so now let's see if that's easier to read. I'm gonna click my move tool, click off of it, extra fruit flavor. I did it again, I said flute again. You guys are gonna make fun of me for that, I know. You're gonna turn around and go, Mr. A, you said flute. And I'll go, I did. So we have diet, mine isn't done yet, extra fruit flavor, and that's pretty good. I kinda of like that, we're gonna go with that now. And that's gonna be what our can is gonna look like. We got lots of info, it's well balanced, it's a good color scheme. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click back on my move tool and then move over to my layers and I need to select all of my layers, every single one of them. So start at the top and then I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard, that shift, and then I'm going to click every layer all the way down until I have everything selected. The way you know everything is selected is when they're all gray. We have it all selected. Now we're gonna make it 3D. This is the best part. Make sure every one of these is selected. Don't skip this step. Then we go up to the word 3D at the very top, hit 3D, and then the menu's gonna drop down and we want new mesh from layer, this one. New mesh from layer. Move your mouse across and we wanna go to mesh preset. 
because it's already preset to soda. So I'm going to click soda, click it. It's going to take a minute to process. Then we have it 3D. Now mine's a little dark here. Mine's dark because I went in and messed around with, with the lights. Yours should be nice and bright right now. Yours should be good. So what I'm going to need to do is go and fix the lighting over here on the side. It's kind of confusing how that part's done. Yours at the deep default should be just fine. So I'm going to pause my movie quick and I'm going to fix the lighting and I'll be right back. Yours should be fine. Okay, there we go. I, I fixed it. Uh, the other day I went in and I was messing with uh, the lighting. You can actually turn on and off the lighting. Uh, down here in our menu, you can actually change the lighting. So don't worry about that. That's a little bit more complicated. But if you take your mouse and you click right on it, you can rotate all around the can. You can look under it, around it, and just kind of click and drag different directions to see what it's going to look like all the way around. So what we're looking for is to see a little bit of the top. I mean, you can kind of decide what angle, but we want to see a little bit of the top. We don't need to see the bottom, but we want to see the majority of the label like this. And then once that's done, um, along the way, you're always going to want to save. So we're going to do uh, save as, and I'll call it, uh, we'll call it can template. Uh, we'll call it can template test. And I'm going to save it in my downloads. Save. Okay. So um, the PSD file, which we just saved, stands for Photoshop document. And that's the one that we can go in and alter 3D. But we just want an easier one to hand in to me. We're going to do File. We're going to go under the File menu. We want to export a quick export as PNG. A PNG file will be visible on the web. You're going to send that to me can template test saved in my downloads folder hit save now I want to take a look at it make sure it came out okay so you're gonna move your mouse all the way to the bottom and click on this little smiley face called finder and I want you to go back in your downloads and I want you to find your top one that you just did can template and hit the space bar and it'll pop open there it is it looks great uh, so no background nice and clear that looks fantastic so I'm going to hit the little X button and there it is. Or if you double click, it'll, it'll launch in the preview mode and you can X out of it there. Step is going to be sending it to me, making sure that I have a copy that I can print in color. If you save it on your account, there's no way I can get to it. So what you'll need to do is go back to classroom and you're going to want to click on this one that says, uh, that I posted a new assignment called Photoshop 3D Soda Can. Click on that. And once you get in there, what you're going to see is something that looks like this. And what you need to do is turn it in. Um, if you just hit the turn in button, it's not going to work. Now I'm in teacher mode. And when you're in the mode of a teacher, it's, it doesn't let you see it the same way a student does. So what you're going to need to do is attach a file. So you're going to attach a file. So you're going to click a button over here that there's a drop down menu and it's going to have a paper clip that says file. At this point, since I can't show it to you here, you can call me over and I'll show you what you're going to need to do. But at this point, you're going to need to upload it so that it's handed in to me so I have a copy of it. So it, once you're done and you've saved that PNG, and you're ready to upload, call me over and I will show you what to do. So thanks for watching the video. I'm sure your soda cans look great. Can't wait to see them.